What's up guys? Welcome back to AC Designs Garage and today we're jumping into something a ton of you guys have asked for and it's the good old flux core. So we're going to be using some O30 on the flux core. We're going to be doing a 3 16 T joint. I'm going to do a couple of them, see if we can change manipulations, get better looks. On the well, make sure they're super strong. But today's main goal is to teach you guys how to flux core as fast as I can and show you all the little tips and tricks to get y'all arcing and a sparking faster than you can shake a stick at. So here we go. All right, guys, let's get you over here and I'm going to show you what wire we're using. There ain't no rhyme or reason on this wire. I just scooped it up off the old Amazon. And all this stuff that we're using, the grinders, the wheels, any kind of stuff like we need to go ahead and get this up here especially with flux core you're going to want some anti-spatter i usually like to coat my table down wipe it off and even the pieces we'll do we'll uh coat them down real good that way you can get that little bbs and stuff off it don't look that good sorry if i sound a little muffled guys i got a cold but hey i'm here for you i'm putting in the work for you guys so hopefully get y'all out there arcing and sparking sooner all right, as for machine, we're running the old uh, Art Captain MiG 200 I've been using for months. If you've watched any of my videos, I actually have a flux core video on doing some super thin sheet metal. I'll link it. I put it in a flux core playlist. I think I'll create one for you guys. So you flux core guys that want to check it out, y'all can. Uh, this is a 110-220 machine. We're running on 220. It has a bottle on it, but we're not running that. We've run it before if you watch my other videos on how to MiG weld. But now we're going to get down here and we're going to put the old flux core wire in it. This is O30. Stuff worked pretty good. I hadn't used it a whole lot. You can see I don't do a whole lot of flux core, but I had a ton of you guys ask for it. And uh, I'm going to give it to you if that's what y'all want to see. Actually, the more I use it, the more I actually like it. Now, for body work, I've been doing custom paint, fabrication, body work, stuff like that for 27 years. If this is all you got, go for it. But I will say, if you put your bottle in a regulator on some solid core MIG wire, 023, make your life a whole lot easier. And uh, later on in this, probably next month or so, I'm going to try to do some uh, actual rust repair. I've been trying to do this series and build it up for you guys to get all your skills built up. And then we're actually going to jump in on a project on my 65C10 here. I got some uh, door patching to do, and we're going to show you how to fix the patina back, make it stay looking like that. Some of y'all don't like that, but... That's what we're gonna do so here we go let's get the old wire put in here uh we'll get started now and show you when you do flux core regular mig when you run solid core mig it's dc electrode positive so your gun is your electrode your ground clamp that's over on the table all right got it clamped down over here that's your negative well when you do flux core it's called dc electrode negative so your mid gun is going to be on the negative side. If you can see right here, there's a minus, and there's the positive. And there's your minus. So all we have to do, get the flashlight out of the way, is take and switch these two for flux core. So I'm just going to unhook. This goes to your ground clamp. That's usually negative on your MIG. I'm going to unhook it. This is your MIG gun. That's positive. We'll just switch it over to the negative side. Then come back over here. I like these dense style connectors too. They're so easy to change. Um, some machines you have lugs that run on the inside, like the wires go in, and it'll show you on there. You just you just have to undo the nuts and switch them around and lock them back down. But this makes it so much easier. So we're gonna go around here and I'm gonna get y'all set up and we're gonna show you how to put the wire in first thing you have to do is come out here I've already got the wire pulled out when we pulled our solid core out and run a 030 tip they make these little plastic ones that goes over the ends but I've got two that disappeared on me I've got two different uh, nozzles here so I just use these instead of the plastic ones because the one I got to use in my last video I taped on it, it it looked kind of goofy because I didn't have the right one, but go ahead and pull your uh, pull your little tip out. It's the O30 tip because we're running O30 wire. So get you set up over here. Now before I show you all this, they, they have a, a setup guide on most of your machines and stuff like that. But I'm going to set mine to where I know this welder here works pretty good. It's going to be set at, I like to write stuff on the table in case I'm welding and you guys wonder. This is what our voltage is going to be, 19.1. 
this machine here reads in meters, meters per minute. So 6.0 meters per minute equals some of your other machines run off of inches per minute. And that's what I'm used to, but that's 236. That's what the 6.0 equals. So 19.1 volts, 236 inches per minute is what we're doing. Our metal, 4.7 mm's for you millimeter people, but we're in the old freedom units. So it's 3 16 inch thick, two inch wide, three inch long. So we got two sets of them. I'm gonna show you how to print these. Even though it's flux core, a lot of people think it's cause it's flux core, you can just leave it rusty and stuff. Clean this stuff like you're gonna paint it. That's the way I do it. If you clean it like you're gonna paint, you're gonna get a better job and that's what we're looking for. All right guys, well this one here, the way it unspools, usually they put the stickers on the correct side, but for some reason this one's on the wrong side. So that's why I wanted to show it to you what I was running, the E71T.GS030. Uh, this machine will also run 10 pound spools. That's what I usually run. I just took the adapter kit off there and uh, just made it where I can just run this without the spring. Uh, also, I'll show you real quick. When you're running flux core, you run the gnarly, the gnarly ones. But if you want, look at this. How good you guys can see it, but see how they got the knurls in them? They're real, they're real gnarly. Yeah, that's what you run for your flux core. And I'm gonna show you how to set the tension and stuff on the machine because these here you gotta watch. And uh, the ones that come with these, I went in here and like I said, I I used the Imperial system. So O30 is uh, 0.8 in the MMs and uh, 040 is uh, 1.0. So it comes with both of them on this machine. The wire runs to the inside, so you flip, we're running 030, so we'll put the 030 to the inside. It's got a little keyed place right here and stuff. We just slide that in like that. And then we'll uh, undo this, and I'm gonna link these also. You're gonna want a set of MIG pliers. These things are good for cleaning your nozzles and clipping this and stuff, but you're going to want to kind of hold your finger on it because it's like a spring. It'll come on cold and it'll make a mess. So keep a little tension on it like that. But it's going to come, on this machine, it's going to come off the bottom of the spool like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide her on her. Look at that. She's already wanting to uncoil on me. I'm going to clip a good straight piece. And what we have to do is, is we're not even going to hook, put the nut or anything on it yet. I'm going to, uh, Try to keep my hand on this without making too much of a mess. I guess I need to put the old washer and stuff on it. And don't forget to do this. I always forget to do this. It'll actually run without it, but put our washers on here and just put some tension where this thing won't start backing up on us. Now, what you're gonna do is you gotta line that thing up. All right, guys, see if we can get this lined up. It's a little harder with the knurled ones. Let's see if I can, uh, I can get it on the smooth part over here. Get on smooth, and then we'll pop it over into the knurled. There we go. All right, we had it on smooth. We'll just push it over into the knurled section. And you just put your clip on here. Now I'm going to show you how to set your adjustment here in a second. Because we're going to run some of this spool off to fill the wire up. But usually I run mine at about two. But I'll show you how you test it and get it. Because you don't want to crimp. Because if you don't know what flux core is, it's actually the wire. And it's hollow and the flux is on the inside of the wire here. So we're going to cut the old machine on. It's got a cool light in here too. Check that out, where you can see what you're doing better. But. So we got it about right there. I think that's gonna be probably good, but we're gonna get out here and adjust it. All right guys, what you're gonna wanna do is uh, straighten your cord out the best you can. And just watch it, make sure it ain't binding up or anything. See how that'll speed up? You just wait till it comes out of the tip. I feel it coming up through there now. That's why you want to take your tip out of the end of it. All right, we're through there now. I'm gonna go ahead and put my tip in. And 
I'll show you how to set the tension. Like I said, you don't have to crank it on these like the, when you're using solid core, they have rollers in this machine that the grooves like a V and uh, you can tighten it down pretty good. But this right here is the rule of thumb. I'm gonna back it off and uh, I'm gonna take this thing and bend it. See, it's not slipping. I'll back it off just a little bit. See, it's slipping a little bit on that. Just about right. You want it to where it won't. Barely slips through there like that. That's about right. Like I said, you're gonna want some of these. Uh, then you're gonna, this is another thing we're gonna list this to. I use this on flux core or the other Scott's nozzle gel. And it's nuts, you just, you just put it in there. It puts a layer, just makes everything clean up real good. And uh, come over here and we'll get this metal ready. I mean, I'll bring you over here and we're gonna set the machine. Should be done in there. We'll shut this up. And uh, get ready to start doing a little arcing and a sparking. If you guys wanna help support the channel and be one of the cool kids, go scoop you up one of these rad AC Designs Garage t-shirts. But wait, there's more. Check out the back. So remember, go pick yours up at www.acdesignsgarage.com. Now back to the arcing and the sparking. All right, guys, you're going to want to get this meal scale stuff off here, and you'll see how dingy it is. Uh, you can buy this stuff, hot rolled P&O. It's called pickled in oil. It don't have a meal scale on it. It's good and clean. That's what we use for plasma cut and stuff. Works really good. But this is just some hot rolled I had around here. So we're going to take this little 60 grit here, roll lock on the air grinder, and just clean up this area here where we're going to go. Uh, we'll treat both of them with the anti-spatter here. And uh, we're going to do our table before we get well no, because I don't like any BBs all over the table. So let's get these cleaned up real quick. And uh, get a little closer. See right here, you can see the difference of the, taking the meal scale off. You don't have to with this stuff. It will dig into it, but like I said, treat it like you're going to paint it, and you'll get a better job. We're here just to do the very best of our abilities, and it's going to take you a little bit, guys, to get this stuff down. I'm not down on it because I had not done enough of it, but more practice, the better you get. Anytime I go up to like 3 16ths, I do like to cut a little bevel. It don't have to be much, but just cut a little chamfer on each side. This helps with the penetration. Now, this stuff here, it'll dig like an excavator on in some muddy dirt, but, you know, every little bit helps. Plus, it kind of helps clean the mill scale out of your grinding disc, too, because this stuff's hard to rock. Let me get something else. This mill scale here is a little harder than normal, so I'll get a, another tech tip here for you and show you what I use to get meal scale off. It works great. Alright guys, I've done a video. I can't believe I didn't think about this. Maybe it's cold. I got, got my head all jumbified. But anyway, this is what I've done a video before on how to clean meal scale. And uh, these are actually paint strip discs. I'll link them in the description below. We'll see how good it does on it. Usually they do a pretty good job. And uh, you can put these on a regular four and a half inch electric grinder. I just got this one on my Air Ingersoll Rand one. Especially with this stuff here, make sure you got some gloves on because you don't want to knock the bark off your old fingers. Now you saw how we done with that, and let's see if it's a little better. Yeah, I don't It does a better job and it don't remove any material you can see the difference and have these big old gouges to where this don't so all right guys this stuff here is old i don't know if i can find this brand name it brand names really don't matter on this stuff i hadn't found yet you can see how nasty this table is but what we're going to do is i'm going to wipe all this uh grind and stuff off and we're going to 
put us a good coat of this anti-spider on the area that we're working here. That way it's just easy to clean up. You can come back and lock there and take this stuff off, but this stuff's pretty old. It, it does okay, but I'm just gonna put a good, good even layer and then we'll just wipe it off. Well, not wipe it off, but just lightly just go across it. Probably gonna wipe some. I'm trying not to wipe too hard so I don't wipe all my writing off the table. Yeah. We'll let that, that'll just dry up a little bit. And that should be the last. Well, we're gonna do our, our pieces too, ain't we? Now, here's our two bottoms. that off there and then this this don't spray as good as that other stuff I had. It sprays a little thick I think because it's old. So we'll just uh put this extra here and wipe that off and wipe this one off. Put your little insurance on there. And it makes a big old there especially like I used to do roll cages and stuff that on the off-road team I used to work on. We used to spray all the tubes down, so because you didn't want them big old BBs sitting all on there, it just don't look professional. So that's what we used to do. So here are two. Everything is ready to stand up and tack. And uh, now as for like a nuclear weld, I don't know if it passed by putting this on it, but this old flux core here it will. All right, we're gonna go over here and do our uh, 19.1 volts. So we'll come over here and crunk that up to the 19.1 and we'll go back to the 6.0 I think is what it was. Yep, 236 inches per minute. I don't use it in synergic mode too much because I like to be able to adjust them separate. But basically what you do is when you put it in synergic mode, you crank your volts up. It's supposed to match your wire feed speed to it. it gives you kind of a in-between kind of around about where it's supposed to be but you know the more i mess with it, the more i learn it so will you guys but 19.1 dc electro negative get my gloves here we're using the mechanics fabricator gloves uh these work pretty good i'll get out my shield and stuff and uh you saw me in the intro i'm wearing a wrangler uh, denim shirt works pretty good if it was overhead i'd probably want a leather with this stuff, because it's kind of like stick. It's got pretty hot little fireballs falling everywhere, but I've been wearing these for years and stuff. My dad's a welder and he's used them for years, so it worked for him, worked for me, so we're gonna get suited up. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you real quick on my style helmets. I don't use fixed shade lens. There ain't nothing wrong with a fixed shade lens before y'all get all mad at me. I like these for the simple reason that I do a whole lot of spot welding, and if you're picking your hood up and down 48,000 times, it wears your arm out. So this right here is the one I weld with a lot. I love this one, and I'm going to show you why. But this didn't come on this Vulcan, so don't think you're going to buy this Vulcan and get this. Watch this. Bam! Got a headlight on that unit. This is my nice TIG one. This one I used a lot for it. That's why it's not all nasty. But that aluminum weld piece there it attaches to it, and it goes over there. See the wire run to it? It's a cool thing to help you see because if you ain't got light, you can't see real good. But like if you was getting up in a wheel well or something, bam, that mug is rechargeable, made right here in the USA, and I will link these below. These things work great, but this is my nice pretty TIG helmet, and I don't want to get it all nasty up with this smoky flux core stuff. Here's my, well, this is a good helmet too. I love all these helmets. I changed this out to the True Arc lens, but these are all digital, and this one I wear a lot. It's just my older one, and I use my really good one here. This Miller Digital Infinity. Got the big old screen on it. But this is what I lay down and put my phone in to do the arc shots for you guys. But, yeah, you can put these on any helmet. It don't have to be that. You just cut the little hole. And like I said, I'll link a, a descri in the description below down there where y'all can scoop y'all one of these up. You can put it on any helmet. It don't matter. I got another one I may put on my Miller, but it's the one I shoot all my arc shots with so we'll get this and put up and we'll get suited up and start arcing and sparking and one thing's guys if you don't realize about flux core 
is it puts off more smoke than a Willie Nelson concert in South Texas. So make sure you wear your respirator. I ain't kidding you guys. This thing smokes like crazy. We're gonna get these things tacked together real quick. Then I'm gonna show you your uh, gun angle and travel speed. I drag on regular MIG, but I'm all, I don't even know if you can push with flux core. I'm not going to, but everybody I've ever seen done it, it's kind of like stick weld and you want to drag. But I'm gonna show you your, you need to have your 15 degree angle and it needs to be 45 into this angle and then you're gonna tip it forward 15 degrees and we're gonna go. We're gonna put a couple tacks on these real quick. Yeah, this will work. I got these aluminum blocks and stuff. This helps pull heat out of stuff. So we'll just use that. Take one little block, stick it right there like that. Yeah, that's nothing I like about doing this stuff indoors. Good thing about this, you can weld outside without worrying about the the wind blowing your gas off because there's no gas. So we'll get these tacked real quick. Turn right there, you'll get a little uh slag on there you have to scratch off get a good wire brush that's why i'm tacking the back side so i ain't gotta worry about getting it off getting that stuff off good parallel there yeah that's close enough see that mess we there it just wipes away here we go time to make some more smoke Looks like it's eating in there pretty good, digging on down into the root. Uh, the BBs, look, look at that. All that stuff wipes off. Look at that, no bunch of BBs. We can just clean it right off by hand. Looking like a million bucks. I'm telling you, that stuff will, the anti spatter will be your friend. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this on here just for some uh, weight on it so I don't move it around. So I'm gonna get you in here a lot closer and I'm gonna show you the gun angles we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do. Um, we may try a loop de loop the cursor feed to do a little stacking dimes, if you wanna say, on that. This first one I'm gonna do, probably one of the, I'd say stronger welds. You got your stringer where you just go in there and you just run it straight down the root. That digs in good. That's a good way to do it. And you can do a stringer to where you come in here and it's called a whip and pause. And basically what you do is you'll get out here and get your arc started good, come forward and just wash about halfway back, forward, wash, halfway back, forward, wash, halfway back. Now that will put in a little bit more heat in your material, but it will dig in good. And then sometimes they look pretty good. You can zigzag it back and forward, curse the fee, loop de loop, whatever you're gonna call it. But whip and pause, we're gonna whip and pause this one. We're gonna do a WP. And then this one here, I just want to show you what different things does. We're going to leave all the settings the same. So this one here, we're going to do the... We'll put dimes on this one. We'll do stacking dimes on that side. And we'll do the... Let's see, how do we want to do this one? Ah, we'll do zigzaggy on this side. So you can tell the difference. I gotta remember, whip and pause is on this first one. So always what you're gonna do is you wanna, if you notice on these MIG pliers, they're that thick, that's about almost a half inch. So what you do is, has, see it's got a hole on this side, the clippers on this side. You can just take this thing with this tip. That gives you the perfect, about to stick out. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, MM guys, half inch is like 13 millimeter, so. You want about a half inch, you keep a half inch of standoff as you're going. That means you don't want this contact tip in here any closer than a half inch. So basically about that far, you want to be able to see that much wire at all times. You can determine that by, I hold mine like this with the gloves on, of course, and I'll get my height, and you can come down through here and you can slide your hand, if you got a good clean table, or you can roll like that. But if you'll do that, get your height that you want, and you got the same height the whole time. That's part of the consistency. Don't dig it in. And you start bringing it back here, it'll start spitting and sputtering real bad. You'll know if you go in a little closer, keep that half inch or the width of a Sharpie. 
pretty much the same thing. So, let me get you in here and show you the angles real quick. All right, guys, first we're gonna start with the angle that it's gonna be coming in from the side and see how this is running in. If you come off of here and come straight up this, that's a 45 or pretty close to it. So you want to point, that's the angle you want to be pointing in this direction. There's two angles. We're going to call it compound angle in here. So that's your 45. You're going to keep that 45. All right, guys, we're still at the 45. Now we're just going to tilt it this way about 15 degrees. See how that is? About like that. That's about where you're going to want it. And if you get to that point, I don't know how good you can see it, the tip of the wire right there, you'll be able to watch your puddle from back here as you drag it, and you'll just come down through here and point this just like a pencil right into the root, the ditch, the gap, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, 45, get your 45 into it, then just tilt about 15 degrees, you'd be ready to go. So we're going to whip and pause this unit. We've got a wire clip, clip after every time you weld. I'm going to whip and pause this side. And then I'm going to spin it around. I'm going to whip and pause the other side, but I'm going to do it through an arc shot where you guys can actually see what the puddle's doing and stuff. So that way you can get, so we're probably just whip and pause it. And we're probably just going to do a little uh, loop-de-loop, cursive feed, stacking dimes, where you want to call it. It's, it's all about consistency, guys. You may see, yes, yeah, sometimes I do it. It stays like this is, this is the solid core stuff from, uh, I think it was week before last video. We're going to try to, you're not going to get that good of effect with the, flux core but you can get pretty good so i'm gonna start the burning i'm gonna move it forward half of the width of that puddle i'm gonna back up move it forward back up move it forward back up y'all get the gist of it so let's make some smoke tell you what can't have too much of this stuff here so let that tack just a hair All right, going to remember guys, 45, 15, go at it. Up in smoke. Whew. I think it's going to be pretty right there. Let you see what this stuff be looking like. Up in smoke. So now what we're going to have to do, we'll see how good this wire is. Let me get a wire brush. Make sure you got a good clean wire brush here. You may have to use it on a side grinder. But you see what it looks like now? I can hold this. There we go. I tell you, this wire does pretty good. Some of this wire don't do that good. Hey, she's still warm. Tell you what, guys, that ain't too shabby for a flux core. What y'all think about that? Watch out. Right before it burns you. It's got good penetration, I think. It's stacked up pretty decent. I think she's burning there good. She ain't going nowhere. Man, that's, that's pretty dead going good. I kind of like the old whipping paws on there. All right, I'm going to set y'all up an arc shot so y'all can see how to do it on the back side. All right, guys, I got you set up inside the helmet on the arc shot here. I'm going to wire brush the other side. Put me a little bit of that anti-spider over there. And uh, I hope y'all can see this uh, whip and pause action on here. Like I did before, I'm just going to clean clip the tip. Looks like the temperature and everything really good on the setup, I think. Give me a couple practice runs. All right, y'all ready? Drop your hood. Oh, man. 
We got a kink in the wire. Well, let's clamp it and do it again. Start right back in. guys there it is my wire for some reason got kinked in there a little bit make sure i ain't making no mess in here yeah, everything looks pretty good it could have just got wrapped under that a little bit or something yeah we'll get her uh cleaned off real quick see how she looks I will say the slag comes off of this wire pretty daggone good. Said it wasn't nothing expensive. Tell you what, the more I do this daggone flux cord, the more I like it. I never, I was always, you know, shied away from it because everybody's like, that stuff's horrible, it's garbage. The more I use it, I kind of like it. Not for sheet metal, but because I've done it on it. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take our old stainless wire brush. Right here where y'all can see it. Come here. You can clamp it down and get you a good uh, wire wheel on a like a four and a half inch grinder. That's really good. I tell you guys, that's not bad. I mean, that's not stacking dimes but i'm gonna tell you what that lady down in there nice it's still a little warm i'll guarantee that unit there ain't gonna break guys but i sorry i dropped it on your toe you gotta wear steel toes around me people so here it is looking pretty good uh and if you look at the table here let's see if i got another rag in my pocket and babies, wipe right off. Check that out. Look at that clean table, ain't got that garb all over it. So, man, I'm impressed with that. All right, we're gonna do on this one right here. Let's see. I gotta do a loop-de-loop -loop on there. Curse of feed stacking dimes. I gotta see what it does, guys. I mean, do y'all wanna see that? I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, Set y'all up on the arc shot so they can, because I, I do want to do my zigzaggy on this side. But we're going to do the old stacking dime loop-de-loop -loop job on this one here. Got my wire on that goofy. I think it's where I bent my hose around, maybe. I don't know. All right, guys, for those of y'all that don't know what the cursive e is, it's basically, you know, how we did the whipping paws down through the, We'll call this the middle of the crack, the middle of the root, whatever you want to call it. And then the metal goes this way and this way. I'll just try to give you a little bit. You're going to start right here in the middle and you're just going to come up and loop, come down, forward loop, down, forward loop, down, forward loop, down, forward loop, down, forward loop. You know what I mean. Go down through there like that and uh, that's what we're going to do. I don't know how good it's going to work. I've never done it with flux core, so we'll see how it does. But as hot as this stuff burns in, I think it'll, it'll be good and strong. All right, guys, here we go. Loop de loop. Curse of E. shot it turned out pretty good this is the stacking dimes loop de loop cursive e you see what it looks like now how she looks compared to the whipping paws there
It's not like they're having a horse racing on top of the shop. There must be some squirrels out there. Well, there's the stack and dimes one, and it does pronounce the circles a little bit better. I'll take it in there on the wire brush on the little grinder I got. There's the, I'll let you take your pick. There's the loop de loop stack and dimes one. And she burned in there nice. She's got good penetration down in the root. Still a little warm, but it's hard to drive it. You can see that where it got down in there real good in the root. I could probably get a little better on this if I wasn't trying to film it, but that stack of dimes. Uh, I'll tell you what, the old, right now the old whipping paws to me is the better looking one. So I'm gonna flip this uh, stack of dimes one around and we're gonna do our little jig jagger, zigzagger, whatever you want to call it. We are clean. I'm telling you guys, clean is a trick to this flux core stuff. This is cheap wire. This is a great affordable welder that I believe everybody should own one or five. And uh, that's good. I mean, you see what I'm doing it with. It ain't nothing fancy. We're going to wipe this nice table off again without garbage all over. I'm going to set that up. Then I can get my well, I'm going to probably leave y'all in an arc shot, guys, that way, because I'm running out of metal. And uh, that way y'all can see. We're going to just zigzag this and up down, kind of like Charlie Brown's T-shirt, you know, that little deal with that. So, do the table around it. Got us a little bit of anti-spator. A couple little tricks, guys, y'all can learn to make that stuff look good. All right, guys, we're going to do the old zigzag Charlie Brown shirt outfit here real quick. And uh, we're going to wrap this video up. guys it's the old zigzag that's what it looks like basically the way i got drawn on there that's what it looks like so we'll get y'all on the old tripod real quick so i can clean this off and uh what i'll do is i'll go in there and clean them off on the old wire wheel and make them look 100 percent as good as they can and we'll look at them and compare them and talk about it real quick and then time to go get a bean because i'm getting hungry all right let's knock this slag off i will say i don't know if it has anything or as much to do with that uh anti-spatter or if just this uh wire cleans up but a lot of that stuff won't come off that good i've watched videos you guys and it just don't clean up as good like i said it could have to do with the uh that anti-spatter I don't think there's a wrong way to do it. I, that right there looks good, I think. The old zigzaggy. Don't look too bad. She dug in there pretty good. I didn't wrap the beginning as good. See how I wrapped the end? It comes around the end right there. But What y'all think? Which one's y'all's favorite? Drop down to comment. Zigzag, cursive E, or whipping paws? All right, guys, make sure you wear all your protection and stuff with these wire wheels because these things will sling out everywhere and get all up in your grill and it hurts. Safety glasses, gloves, all that good stuff. There we go. Cleans it up nicely.
All right, guys, here's the very first one we've done here. This is the whipping paws. I think it looked pretty good. I think, you know, I could work on my consistency a little more, but if you want to... So basically what I did, like I said, we got our 15 degree laid back, 45, lay it forward 15. I started here, I moved here and I moved back. I moved here, I moved back, I moved here, I moved back. You know, like that, on and on. All the way down. But I will say, I should have wrapped around a little bit more. See how I left that there? I shouldn't have left that. Not wrapped around because that can cause a crack, you know. So what you need, you need to start around that edge like that, but... I did wrap the end. Well, it's the end here. I didn't wrap that great either, but on the other ones we did. But yeah, it uh, we done pretty good. Yeah, looks pretty good. Here's the other one we done. Now this one here is the one that I done behind the helmet. So or where y'all saw the arc shot. So it's not as good because I moved on it some. You know what? I think this is the one that where my wire goobed up on it. Yeah, that's why it's skinny right there. Yeah, they did pretty good. Whipping piles, I like that method right there. Got a bunch of heat in it because it started bowing this thing. But, yeah, whipping piles, I think this is a good one to learn. It's an easier one to learn than, like, the stacking dimes because you got to loop around, loop around, loop around like that. And I'll show you that in here in a minute. But let me get you in here to the, the old controversial stacking dimes. Now, this one done okay, especially towards the beginning. Up here looked really good. But this is like the curse of feed where you come in here and you just, uh, I don't know, I ain't using my pointer. Get up in here and see, I missed this all together right here. Yeah, I need to start on up in here further. But you get up in here and you come back and you loop around, you move forward, you loop around, you move forward. And every one of these little circles that everybody calls dimes, that's where we've looped back around, come forward, loop back around, come forward. Actually, you stay up in the root. Come forward, loop back around, come forward, loop back around. And that's how you do it. I got a little off on my consistency down here, but that just comes with time. But look pretty good. Now, when we talk about wrapping the ends, this one here is the one I've done better. I was scared I was going to weld it to the table because it was laying right on the table. But you can see this one here, it, it wrapped in real good. My beginning, I still need to work on wrapping the beginning. But now this is the old Charlie Brown zigzag. And I can tell you what I messed up right here in the middle. You can see that. I started out good and wide doing the zigzag like that right there and I got a little tighter here and then I noticed it and then I started going back wide again but that's a good weld wraps around real nice stacking down so which one's y'all guys favorite make sure you drop down the comment below and uh, let us know stacking dimes whipping paws or the old Charlie Brown zigzag which one y'all like the best I don't know which one I'm using for the thumbnail I tell you what guys that whipping paws there looks pretty dead gone good yeah, zigzag looks kind of like a regular old stick weld for me. Some other guys maybe I do better, but what y'all think? Try to guess which one I used on the thumbnail. You'll see it, but try to guess which one. I don't know. It's going to be one of these four. But anywho, hope that helped you out, guys. All right, guys, hope y'all enjoyed that little video on doing the flux core, how to do it easy. I, I hope this helps you guys. As for me, like learning this stuff, if it takes dragged out forever, I have the patience of a gnat, and I just can't do it. So I hope this will help speed y'all's learning process up and uh, maybe change the people's minds of flux cores. Kind of changed mine. I, like I said, I hadn't done a whole lot of it. I've tigged and mig, solid core, gas shield and mig. Never have done much flux core. I just heard horror stories about it and how hard it was to weld. But I think these three or four tips you got right here, guys, y'all should be able to pick this up pretty quick. The big thing with the flux core is your standoff, how far your contact tips off of it. That half inch, maintain that. Just if you got a prop on the table or whatever you got to do to prop up to maintain that half inch and keep your 15 degrees lean forward. And uh, just like you're going to take off running, 15 degrees is what you need to do. Uh, make sure you visit all the links I'm going to put below for my Amazon affiliate account. Like I said, I make small percentages off sales. It's mainly put there to where you guys can uh, help the channel out for one and just the easy place to find it. It don't cost you guys any difference. Also, I'm going to drop you a code for the Art Captain MiG-200 down there. As you can see, it makes a good flux core machine. So if you don't have the money right now to get the regulator and shield and gas, which we use 7525 argon carbon dioxide mix, can't afford that now get the welder that you can upgrade to 
it's I think it's under four or five hundred bucks. It's not it's not an expensive machine, and this machine handles everything I can throw at it. And remember, guys, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We go.